Hello and a very warm welcome. My name's Ben Hocking. My name's Harry Eads. And my name is Samuel Say. Um, so, of course, another week without having Formula One action, but we still have plenty to talk about um, and ready to entertain you for the next 45 minutes or so. We're going to be talking about the young drivers in Formula One, basically the, the guys who have only been in the sport for a year. We're going to assess where we think they are now and what we think their potential could be. What is their ceiling in Formula One? Sam, I'm going to start with you. We're going to go with a grading system here. So anything from an A plus down to an F. I, I don't know if any of them will uh, go that low, but Lando Norris, someone who's got a bit of attention over the last few months, thanks to his uh, exploits into streaming. But um, in terms of his Formula One ability, at least, where do you think he is now, and where do you think he could get to? It's interesting, isn't it? Lando is someone that, as a three, we we all really like him. We're all really warm to him. We think he's an upbeat, fun guy, great personality to have in the sport, and someone who, from such a young age, is being a great advocate. I think for the sport, both within it, in terms of being on the track, that's a little hint, and outside of it, you mentioned streaming, you know, he he uh, followed my lead and shaved his head recently, but that was in the name of charity, he raised, I think that was a 15 grand, which is incredible, um, to me, he's, he's, a, he's a top lad, and I think on the track, considering he's had one of the most successful youth careers of all time, Ben, I think maybe you've mentioned the fact before, maybe the most successful youth career in terms of an F1 driver of all time, uh, better than the likes of Lewis Hamilton, that I, I reckon he, if he gets the right car, as it takes for any, I'm going to say this, for any F1 champion, you have to have the right car. You could be the world's best driver that anyone has ever seen, anyone will see. But if you're sat in the Mangardi at the back of the grid, as much as we love it, you aren't going to win a championship. So if the tables go the right way, if things turn properly, if Norris finds himself in the right seat or plays the field correctly and learns what team is doing what and gets himself the right seat. I think Norris could win one, two, three comfortable championships. Um, I think he's currently at kind of a, a B. He did well against Sainz. Sainz probably had his best season going. Uh, but I think Norris wasn't too far off that. I think, yeah, he had a bit of a, an unlucky season. A couple of engine breakdowns that Sainz didn't incur. That unfortunate one in Spa where it broke down on the line with, I think, a lap to go. And he was, you know, screaming cursives over the radio. It's broken. It's broken. Your, your heart goes out for the young guy in his rookie season. I was genuinely quite impressed with Norris. I think he really delivered some solid results. He pulled some cracking overtakes. We saw Bahrain, his second race ever in Formula 1. He goes around the outside of Pierre Gasly, uh, who was in a Red Bull at the time, going through the tight right-hander in Bahrain, turn four, I think it is. You know, he showed some real excellence. And I think that Norris is, you know, a strong B. And I really think he could be an A, A plus driver if he gets himself in the right car. And that's the same for the likes of Vettel, Hamilton, Rosberg, you know, any world champion that's come along, you have to be able to do that car decision making as well as doing the delivering on track. So if he does that bit, then I really think he could be a, uh, a one in a generation driver. And I think he could have the same kind of career tra- trajectory that Hamilton has had both in F1 and out of F1 if he builds a personality for himself. So for me, Super, super promising. One of the best youth candidates we've seen come through for a long time. Very interesting. So currently at a B, potentially A plus potential. That's how Sam views Lando Norris and his future. Harry, what about you? Where would you grade him now? Where do you think his ceiling is? Don't say I above. Agree. No, I, I agree with Sam on the on the point of. Um, it depends. It depends whether he can get himself into the right car. Whether that's through McLaren, whether they develop into a winning team once again, or he moves to a current top team. Whether that's well, potentially Mercedes. He's got the Toto Wolf link, so it could be there. Um, I, I'd give him a B plus for the last year. I think. I think he was so close. Well, not he was so close to signs at least in definitely in qualifying, and even in the races, he gave him a run for the, his money for most of most of the year and did have some horrific bad luck at Spa springs to mind straight away. Um, yeah, I, look, look, we know how talented Lando is. Um, he he was very competitive. His, his junior career has been astonishing. And if you exclude F2, he won pretty much everything on the way up to Formula One. Um, so look, he, we know how good he is. But yeah, like Sam says, uh, it's going to be whether he can get in the right car at the right time. But if he can, then I don't see why he can't win a couple of couple of championships along the way. Maybe even maybe even three. But we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, and I think that's the case for any Formula One driver is they do need a slice of luck um, and they, they need to find their way into the right car. Not, not only find their way into the right car, but, but find their way into the right car at the right time. Uh, whether Lando Norris will do that or not remains to be seen. We know he does have links with Mercedes. McLaren, of course, themselves are looking to progress up the grid. They already have to some degree. Whether they'll continue that in the next few years, who knows? Um, I'd, I'd say I would say a B. Um, I agree with Sam on that. I don't think it was quite good enough for a B plus. Um, I was kind of toying between B, B minus um, for his ability at the moment. However, I do think he has got the potential for world championships, provided he does find himself in the right positions. Um, uh, like you've already referenced, his, his junior career is stellar and really it's only the Formula 2 season where he didn't win. Um, he, he put up a good fight. It was no, by no means a bad season, uh, but that's pretty much the only thing he didn't win on his way up the, the uh, to Formula 1. And he almost accumulated 50 race wins before he'd even got to Formula 1, which is an incredibly impressive tally and something I've mentioned before that I can't think of a another junior career that even comes close to that number of wins. I'd put Norris's potential in A. Um, I, I think the A plus is reserved for those who I think are maybe top 10 talents of all time, top 15 talents. I don't think he'll quite get there. Um you know, I, do I think someone like Hamilton, who I would rank as an A plus, would I? Do I think he'd lose to Carlos Sainz in his debut season? I, I'm not saying it. It was a it was a bad season, Milano Norris, by no stretch of the imagination. But if you want to be one of the greatest of all time, I feel like you overcome Sainz in your first year. So uh, I'm going to put Lando Norris's potential at an A. I do think he could win a few world championships, um, but he has he is coming up, and we'll probably get on to some other names as well, but he's coming up at a time where uh, there seems to be a real boom in terms of quality drivers coming through. We saw sort of Hamilton, Rosberg, Vettel all come through at the same time. Um, and I think this has been sort of the next burst after that. Russell, uh, Norris, Verstappen, Leclerc, all of these guys coming through at the same time who, if they had found their way into maybe a different era, they might stand alone as the one exciting rookie. But there's so many brilliantly young, talented drivers at the moment. So Norris, I'm going to give him a B at the moment. Uh, potential for an A, though. Um, and we'll move on to Alex Albon next. So, of course, racing for Red Bull now. So of all the names we'll discuss, he's actually the most uh, most senior in terms of the seat that he's got available to him. Sam, obviously started the year at Toro Rosso, went to Red Bull midway through. Where do you see him now and where do you see him in the future? So his season in his first year it was quite topsy-turvy for Alex Albon. Of course, he wasn't expected to be in an F1 seat uh, almost a couple of weeks before the season even really began, and all of a sudden he found himself in that Toro Rosso seat, and it was deceptive. I think. I think he was he was good. He was properly good. Don't get me wrong, but he was up against um, Kvyat, and a lot of people have a lot of mixed reservations around Kvyat. I rate Kvyat quite highly. I think he's a really strong talent scale. I still think he's a very solid midfield driver, better than a lot of drivers on the grid. Don't think he's ever going to turn into a world class, you know all winning champion, but I think he's solid. So he's going up against a, a strong driver there. And I don't think he particularly outdoes Kvyat. I don't think he goes above and beyond what Daniel does. Uh, not to say he was beaten by him, but I think they were pretty evenly matched. And I think that shows that, you know, in your first year, when you're not used to the car, that's pretty good. That's pretty strong. But it didn't wow me. I think the only reason he really got the Red Bull seat above Kvyat is because He's, he's been a done it and it wasn't successful. So they didn't want to give it another go and they drop him again because we, we all know the crisis that could have happened. Kvyat's spending every position in the Red Bull team, you know, from janitor to driver to CEO, all the way back down to his fan. I don't think they want to break hearts again for Daniel Kvyat. So they give Alex Albon a go. And I think realistically, I wanted to see a little bit more in terms of hanging with Max Verstappen. Yes, he did a better job than Pierre Gasly, but Pierre Gasly's time in Red Bull was woeful. It was probably the worst we've seen in a top flight team since Mark Webber was, what, 100 points off Vettel in that championship fight. I think it was shockingly bad for someone who was expected to be in a top three team. Albon did better. Do I think he did brilliantly? Ah, uh, no. I would like to have seen him do a little bit more, be a bit closer to Verstappen. But then again, I do think out of all the rookies, Albon has got the hardest teammate to prove himself against currently. So I think in terms of the season we've seen and where he's going, 
I think Alwyn currently is at a C plus, maybe scraping a B. I don't think he's as good as Norris just yet. Uh, I think he's got the capability of being a, a, a B plus driver. I think, unfortunately, with how the young driver program he's fallen into, I think with Verstappen also being so young, he's just never going to get that priority unless Verstappen ups and moves away. I don't think Albon ever gets that first seat. Um, so for me, it's going to be tough for him to ever break out of that mould of Verstappen or maybe win something over Verstappen unless a real turn of pace happens. And I, I'm really trust in his talent. I think he's going to be a great asset to Red Bull. I think he'll help them possibly deliver championships in the future alongside Verstappen. I don't know if he can go that one step extra. And that, to me, is what will make him an A-level driver, beating Verstappen, especially to a title, which I think Verstappen is capable of. I don't know if Albon is currently. So for me, uh, C-plus currently, B-plus across his career, I think. I have to admit, I don't remember when Danny Kvyat was CEO of Red Bull. It was a short time. It was when Helmut was making some mistakes in the press. He snuck in there for a couple of days. Yeah, that was a short time then. Anyway, so Danny Kvyat, janitor and CEO of Red Bull, confirmed. Um, Albert, of course, won the Rookie of the Year award um, ahead of the likes of Norris and Russell. But uh, obviously, Norris and Albert that we've already analysed, Sam, you've you've put Norris ahead both in terms of current ability and potential ability, which is interesting. Harry, do you follow this or do you rate Albert a bit higher? I agree with Sam. I agree with his grading. Um, but... I think, and we've said this many times, you know, at the end of last year, that Albon was thrown into the that's it was thrown into the Toro Rosso seat at the last minute. Then he was thrown into the Red Bull seat halfway through the season, and like Sam says, he didn't do like a brilliant job, but he definitely did a good job in that seat, considering uh, he didn't really have much time to prep for it. Um, so yeah, I'd agree with the C plus for <coughs> sorry, excuse me, for last year. Um, and I think I'd agree with the B plus for 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 uh, for um, the future. Um, but we haven't really had a. I don't feel like we've had a fair chance, and we probably won't this year either. Have a fair chance to fully um, judge him alongside Verstappen, um, because yeah, like we've said before, he he need he did a good job, but he still needs to step up in twenty twenty whenever that happens. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with Sam on that one, which is a bit of a shame. Sorry. Sorry about that, <laughs> listeners. That is a bit of a shame. But what's more of a shame is I'm, generally speaking, going to do the same thing. Um, oh, gross. Yeah, Alex, that... <laughs> Sorry, guys. We are being boring this evening. Alex Alburn. I mean, he, I, I would absolutely 100% agree that he has the most difficult task of any of the young drivers at the moment. You know, having to go up against Max Verstappen, you could put a, a 30-year-old veteran, a 35-year-old veteran in that car against Verstappen and it would be a tall order. Um, so let alone someone who has literally spent one year in Formula One and only half of that year in the Red Bull team. Not an easy task whatsoever. Um, I would I'd agree with you. I think he is at about C plus. Um and the potential I, I think B plus is is where I would say the absolute ceiling is. I think it's more likely he'll end up in the B category. Um yeah, I, I think if we're using B plus as maybe someone like Perez or Bottas, I could see him going into that role later in his career. Do I see him as this world champion? No, to, uh, to put it bluntly. Um, Albert is a little bit older than, than Norris uh, and indeed Russell, who we'll get on to in a minute. But um, yeah, in terms of Formula One experience, it's it's fairly, uh, it, obviously it's exactly the same. So um, still plenty of room to grow for Albert. Look, I don't think he's going to be able to beat Verstappen. I just don't think they're on the same level. That doesn't necessarily mean Albert hasn't got a future in Formula One. Albert, I think, will able, he has value for a team like Red Bull, which means he'll always have value for teams lesser than Red Bull. So um, if he can hold on to that seat and if he can be a solid number two driver for years to come, that'll be brilliant. If he does end up somewhere in the midfield, which I wouldn't be surprised if that does happen, I think he can forge a career similar to that of Hulkenberg or Perez. Um, but yeah, C plus potential. I'll give it B plus. Um, but anything in between that for his potential wouldn't surprise me. George Russell. So Formula 3 champion, Formula 2 champion, goes up to Formula 1, obviously only in the Williams in 2019. So didn't really get a chance to show what he's capable of. But his junior career does indicate 
uh, that he has a, a good future in Formula One. Sam, where would you put his current potential? Uh, sorry, where would you put his current ability and his potential? I think out of all the rookies that we've currently got on the grid, George Russell is oddly probably the absolute hardest to rate out of everyone. So he is the F2 champ, which is impressive in us for it as it is. You know, he's, he's beat the likes of, uh, of Norris to that top spot. And he was so good through his junior career. So impressive. You know, he got moves done. He showed, he showed clearly that he could lead races from the front. Uh, he was strategically strong. He was able to fight off and defend well. The, the man is a great all-rounder. The issue with Russell, of course, is that he's been stuck in the worst car in almost the last decade of Formula 1, right at the back of the grid. Uh, it's, it's probably Williams' worst form we've ever seen from Williams, and Russell is their front man for that, which is devastating. The only shining light we've seen for Russell is that he was up against Kubica, which is a, a, wor- you know, a world-renowned racer. Everyone has a lot of respect for Kubica, and he beats him, well, apart from the, the, the point that he was awarded due to an issue, but... He beat him, okay? We're going to say it. He beat him. He beat him in qualifying comfortably. Um, pretty much, I think, every single qualifying session, Russell was ahead. And he finished in front of him on the majority of races. Just happened to be the one race where the point was awarded, but he wasn't in front of him. But nonetheless, Russell beats a guy that was tipped to be better than Schumacher at one point, which is impressive to say the least. Maybe not his best form, fair, but he still beat him convincingly. Secondly, Russell can't fight anyone else. But I generally think that with the links that he's got to Mercedes, with Toto, you know, he is tipped to be Hamilton's teammate or maybe the replacement for Hamilton. I think Russell could win championships. And I think out of all of the drivers, he's got the best pathway to getting himself in a world championship secure and drive, which is fantastic. So I think realistically, out of all the rookies, I think he's one of the highest. I would say BB+. I think he's slightly better than Norris in terms of current ability. He just hasn't been able to show it yet. And I think he could be... I don't think he could be as good as Hamilton. And I was slightly over the top with my Norris prediction. So I'm going to say an A for Norris. Like, A A minus for Norris. Just a a strong A for Russell, I think. I think he's got more chance of becoming a multiple world champ than than Norris does. I think Russell just has that slightly more all-round package uh, to him that is what Mercedes are looking for and what a world champion is made of. So I'm hoping he gets a chance to showcase that. It's kind of a bit of a shot in the dark because we don't really know what he can do against other people of the same level at the moment. But I think he'll beat Latifi comfortably and I think he will go on to achieve big things. Very interesting indeed. Harry, what do you think? Yeah, like Sam says, it's very difficult to judge Russell on the... I mean, it's difficult to judge all of these rookies on the case of a year, but particularly Russell... Um, being in that Williams is very hard to gauge. But the noises coming out of Mercedes, um, whether they were happy with, with what he was doing, they, they you know, they, with the data that was coming out, and he's obviously still been doing a bit of testing for them, I think, uh, during the season. Um, yeah, he comfortably ble- bleats. <laughs> he comfortably beats Kubica over the course of a year. Um, I would give him the same grade I gave Norris, which was a B plus. B? I gave him the same one. I can't remember what that was, but it's the same. Um, Yeah, and I think he he too, like Norris, has the potential to go on and win two, maybe three world championships. But caveat, like I said with Norris, he's got to be in the right car. And arguably, he may have the better chance of being in a Mercedes than than Norris does. Um, You know, he's been a Mercedes junior driver for for a long time now. So, um, yeah, it's it's a tough one because he is he's surely one of the the brightest talents on the grid, having been the the F two champion, and he's stuck in one of the wor- well the worst car on the grid, which is which is a, a shame because we're not really seeing what he can do. On the point of of Russell's pathway, Harry, um, I mean it makes sense. He has been at the he has been in that academy for a long time now. He is the logical next step but if Norris keeps on being able to show what he can do and the Williams doesn't really improve and Russell can't do you think it becomes too much of a risk for Mercedes to take him on and they start to look I missed that because you broke up but I'm guessing you you were comparing whether it's more difficult for Russell to go to Mercedes um, I, I was just kind of saying that if Russell continues and Williams continue on that same path does it become too much of a risk for Mercedes to take him on? And does that give the opportunity to someone like Lando Norris who is able to show what he can do? Yeah, that, that risk is definitely real. Um, but they, 
look, they could end up in the team together. Who knows what will happen? But um, I, well, I can't. Mercedes must have their eye on Norris as well as Russell. Um, but you know, Mercedes have they? They like I said, they can see the data from from Williams and Russell's doing testing for them still. It, it's going to be difficult, and he'll definitely. He'll probably hope to either jump out of Williams. It'd be unusual to see him jump out of Williams into Mercedes, but you know we've seen it before with Bottas. Um, yeah, he'll definitely hope to be jumping into a, a quicker car sooner rather than later if he's not going to be in that Mercedes for a few years, just so he can show even the rest of the F1 paddock his talents. Um, so yeah, it could it could be more difficult, but I I still see Russell ending up in a Mercedes at some point in his, in his career. Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. And I actually think it will be sooner rather than later um, because I think regardless of whether it's Bottas or Hamilton who does end up leaving or being booted out, um, I think Russell, I think they will um, take a chance on him, even though he hasn't been able to show what he can do. He ha- he was impressive for Williams, as impressive as he could be at the very least. Um, and yeah, he's continued that relationship with Mercedes, even when he's been at Williams. So I don't think they'll have too many concerns personally. I'm going to give Russell the same grade that I gave Norris, actually. I'm going to say he's a B right now, and I think he could be an A-level driver as well. Um yeah, I mean, Russell and Norris both have the same potential, in my view, that they could win multiple championships. I don't think either of them are going to get to the same level as, as Hamilton Schumacher kind of, you know, grade A tier. Having said that, you know, not many do. So it's it's not much of a slight on them, but I think they've got really, I've got bright futures ahead of them. George Russell... He, I, I, we see Fernando Alonso at Minardi. I'll use that as an example. That was that did not come at Alonso's detriment. He was stuck at the back of the grid pretty much all season. Um, you know, fighting with uh, Tasso Marquez, like he, he couldn't really do anything in that car. However, it didn't really have a negative impact on his career. He eventually found his way into Renault and he was able to then show what he can do. Uh, I'm of the belief that the crew does eventually rise to the top in uh, in Formula One, even if it is difficult at first. You know, you get very different rookie careers at times. You know, Hamilton walked into a car that was capable of winning the championship in year one. Alonso was the complete opposite. Um, we might well see, you know, Lando Norris came into a car that was at least good enough to fight. Russell definitely wasn't, but they might well end up on the same path at some point. So, yeah, I'm going to go a B right now, potential for an A in the future. And the last one we'll do on this category, because he was kind of a rookie, I'm going to classify him as a rookie. Antonio Giovanazzi. On that point, did you see the stream where he joined in the lobby with all the other F1 drivers? Yes. Hey! <laughs> The the bit the most Italian lobby ever there's ever been. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I was a massive fan of that. Uh, Sam, where do you see his current ability and what is his potential? Uh again. I really like Gio. Gio uh, seems like a great guy, really nice. I enjoy that he's part of Formula One. He came into F1 a little while ago in the Sauber, and he made an absolute mess of it. He crashed, I think, pretty much every single part of a Grand Prix he took part in, which is not great. When you were tipped to be one of the best rookies coming through, you were the Ferrari young driver at that point. You know, it's it's not a good first impression. And then he gets another shot. He comes into Alfa Romeo, and that's a big seat. You know, you're alongside world champion Kimi Raikkonen. There's a lot of young drivers, Schwartzman, Schumacher, a lot of people looking at that going... That's a good seat in F1. I, that is a pathway to Ferrari. Leclerc has just proven that. You know, Vettel's on his last legs. We can't admit there's no more than three, four years of Vettel left. And there's every He's chance not of dying. He's not dying. He's not dying. It's his career. His Formula One career. Okay. Um, there's every chance oh, yeah. he's only in it for a couple more seasons. He may hate the 2021 cars. We don't know. So that might be it for Vettel. That means there's a free seat in a top team. It doesn't come around too often. And yet, Gio. I think has done nothing but disappoint other than maybe the last few races of the uh, the most recent season. He, he kind of got used to it a little bit, which is great, but it took him too long. I think it was too little too late. I think he came in, I think he was maybe at, uh, an E plus, D minus rating. E isn't a grade, folks. If you get that in UGCSEs, then 
you need to reassess your life. Focus on something else. Um, so for me, yeah, D minus E plus current ability. I think at best he will be a C plus driver. And I'm, I'm really touching the limit there for him. I'm really trying to be optimistic because I like him. Probably more a C minus to a C driver. I think he's a very average midfield driver. Like a lot of capability, but that never really comes to fruition. Yeah, I'm I'm slightly nervous for for Gio. I I think this career is going to be a little bit short lived. Maybe almost Marcus Eriksson esque in the sense of people really like him. Like we love Marky Ek. You know, he's a great guy, doing well in India, and whatnot. Could win the championship. Who knows? That's yet to come. Um, but I don't think Gio's got what it takes to do it in Formula One, unfortunately. So I think we'll see a couple more seasons of Gio floating around, and unless he brings something else to the table. He's either a reserve driver or he goes to another series. And that's a shame because I like him. But for me, yeah, at best, C to C minus. Very interesting. Very interesting. Harry, what do you grade him at? I grade him at a, around a D for last year. Um, he, I just get the feeling he's a bit of a s- slow burner, if you will. He's not Leclerc, is he? That's obvious. Um, but he has got the talent, but he does, he has ha- also have a bit of a habit of crashing cars, as Sam's alluded to. Um, you know, he's on for uh, his first points in Belgium last year and he binned it with only a couple of laps to go or something. Um, but I, I do think he does have the talent. He just perhaps needs to mature a little bit more. And yeah, like Albon, I think he, we need to give him another year to see how he does. If it if there's not a step up again this year, then maybe then it's it's not going to happen. But um, for his the ceiling, as you were, I'd probably go for. I reckon he's capable of a C plus or a B minus. <laughs> One of those two. <laughs> I'm undecided. I don't feel like we've seen enough of him yet to to get. I don't. I can't judge how far he he could go. He's not going to be world champion. Let's put it that way. It's a really interesting one in terms of comparing um, Giovinazzi because, you know, Russell was very difficult to judge as well. But I think Giovinazzi is as well. He's up against the former world champion. But unlike where Albon is against Verstappen, who we know is either in his prime or very close to his prime, we don't really know where Raikkonen is. I mean, he was at Ferrari, was the second driver to Sebastian Vettel. He moves to Alfa Romeo. At 40 years old, how good is Kimi? It's difficult to assess. If you think he he isn't actually that far off, he isn't too far off what he once was, then you look at the season and think he didn't do that bad of a job, Antonio Giovinazzi. If you think Raikkonen has dropped off massively, and Giovinazzi is just even worse than that, then you you have to rank him much, much lower. I'm going to rank him quite a bit higher than um, than both of you have. I'm going to say he's already at a C. Um, I think his potential, I'm going to say a B. I don't know if he gets there. I think B- minus is a bit more likely. Um, but I think the second half of the season gives me a lot of hope for Antonio Giovinazzi. He was very, you know, he was right up there with Raikkonen in qualifying in that second half of the year. The Alfa Romeo dropped off in terms of pace, which was really unfortunate. If it had happened the other way around, I actually think Giovinazzi would have beaten Raikkonen. Um, But yeah, if the Alfa Romeo picks up pace again, he's got to keep on improving. Like he, he has to continue on that trajectory that he had in the second half of the season. If he doesn't, then you know nothing's gonna nothing's gonna come of his career really. But yeah, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say he's a C now, potential of a B. I wouldn't put money on him reaching it. I think a B minus is more likely. Well, I can't wait for you to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, we'll remember this in four years' time. We'll go back to it, and either I will absolutely slam you or you will absolutely slam me. Well, more chance that you'll slam me because I'm never wrong. I don't know what Ben. I didn't know what I didn't hear what Ben said. Ben's going to slam me for being Aww. wrong. Probably not from Mexico. <laughs> Why is that getting played? <laughs> I haven't done any sound effects yet, so I thought I'd better chuck one in. I might make an avocado from Mexico poster. I think you should. 
Thanks for watching our video, we really appreciate it. For more content, make sure to subscribe to the Late Breaking YouTube channel and to join in the conversation with us three Muppets, then get on Twitter, uh, Instagram and Facebook, we're on all three. And remember, keep breaking late.